Hey, what's good, my dudes? Deveorn here, continuing our Arcane Spellcasting Guide series, Part 5. In this video, we'll be talking about every single level 5 mage spell from start to finish, what they're good at, what they suck at, what the spell does, and whether or not you should be taking them in your runs. We do have a rating system set up here. S tier spells are going to be at the very top. These spells are fucking awesome. You should always take a couple. A tier spells are spells that are pretty good or situationally really awesome. B tier spells are spells that are, for the most part, pretty crappy, but they do have some times where they're good. C tier spells are spells that really you should only be taking if you've got nothing else to take because they're not very good. And finally, we have RP or roleplay tier spells, which are spells that are so bad that unless you're actively roleplaying, you shouldn't really never be casting them. Now, before we get started, just a couple caveats out of the way. I do play the game on hardcore, no save, no reload, which means if the main character dies, it's game over. We have to start from Baldur's Gate 1 in order to work our way through the saga. We also play an insane difficulty, so everyone in the party will be taking double damage. And we also have SCS and the tweak pack installed as well to make it extra challenging for us. So everything I'm saying is going to be in regard to those rule sets. However, pretty much everything of what I say is going to apply to your core rules unmodded runs as well. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, let's go and get started. We're going to start off with the S-tier spells, work our way down alphabetically, then we'll get to A, B, and C. And I don't think there's actually any RP-tier spells in level 5, although we did get some spells that came close. Alright, first S-tier spell here is going to be Breach. Breach is an abjuration spell, so that means transmuters can't take it. Obviously, it's level 5. Has a casting time of 5, so about half a round will take about 3 seconds to get off and it'll target one creature. This is going to be the really your bread and butter spell when it comes to fighting enemy mages. What it does is it dispels a, a really an enormous amount of spell protections, um, but these are more combat protections. Things like protection from fire, cold, uh, fire shield, protection from magical weapons, the armors, immunity, mantle, all that good stuff. Basically, if you're unable to hit your opponent, Breach will remove pretty much everything and let you do so. The spell is absolutely critical in an enormous amount of fights. Pretty much every high level mage is going to be throwing up protection for magical weapons, throwing up mantle, absolute uh, immunity, all that good stuff to stop your fighters from basically pounding them into oblivion. This also works on stone skin, however it does not work on the druid spell iron skins. That spell can only be dispelled through dispel magic. Something to keep in mind, unless of course you do have that component installed with SCS. Um, just like all the level 5 and below spells, this will not work on liches, which is one of the reasons they're so powerful and annoying to deal with. Additionally, this will not work on Rakshasa. I'm not going to go and read every single one of these off, but basically, there's a lot of them, and you're going to be using this spell all the time. Um, basically, anytime a mage throws up a bunch of protections, what you want to do is read through the list and see exactly what he's throwing up to protect himself. The main spells you want to look for are Spell Trap, Spell Shield, Spell Turning, and Spell Deflection. If he has any of these four, he cannot be breached. And you need to do something else to get rid of those spell protections before you can cast your breach. Otherwise your breach will be absorbed, or even worse, it will be reflected and hit you instead. So we'll talk about Ruby Ray of Reversal in uh, Pierce Shield and Pierce Magic a little later on once we get to those levels. But it's absolutely important that you do take out those four spells before you breach, otherwise this will do nothing. Um, we'll talk about Spell Shield a little later on here. Obviously it's a level 5 spell as well, but that is something you want to keep in mind. Make sure they have none of those protections left, and then when you hit them with Breach, they're basically butt naked and a free kill after that. One fighter will be able to pound a mage into a puddle of paste very quickly if he doesn't have stone skin, protection from magical weapons, the armors, and all that good stuff up. And Breach is what you're going to cast to get rid of him. This spell is absolutely mandatory. This game would take a very long time and make every mage very, very difficult if you did not have this. I recommend taking at least two of these on more than one mage if you are playing by yourself. This is a spell you're going to want to take as your sorcerer, otherwise it's going to make the game 10 times more challenging. This is something I'll typically take two of on Edwin and one or two of on every other mage in my party just to make absolutely sure we can obliterate those mages defenses as soon as possible. Really can't say enough good things about this spell. If you're a transmuter you're really playing the game wrong to be honest because you're missing out on this. Can't say enough good things about it. This is something I recommend every single person take. Alright up next 
Chaos is just barely on the precipice of being an S tier spell. I almost made this an A tier spell, but I end up using it all the damn time, not only in BG1, but in BG2 as well, and it's just so effective at what it does. So this is an enchantment spell. It um, has a casting time of 4, it's an AoE spell, hitting multiple targets, and basically this is a buffed version of the confusion spell. It causes the victim to wander away, attack their friends, cast spells like monkeys, and unlike Confusion, which I believe can be cast with a negative 2 penalty, Chaos comes with a negative 4 penalty, which is devastating. If you hit somebody with a Greater Malison just before Chaos goes off, they have to save their first this spell with a massive minus 8 penalty. If you have a Doom up there too, they're saving versus negative 10. That is very, very, very difficult to save successfully against. If you're an Enchanter, that would boost it up to negative 12, and... Really, you can't say enough good things about this spell. We remember how powerful Blind is and able to take targets out of the fight completely. Chaos will do the same thing. It doesn't last as long as Blind, obviously, which is basically permanent. But 5 rounds plus 1 round per level is more than enough time for you to do absolutely devastating amounts to enemies. Um, as we said before, this doesn't do anything against Liches. Um, I believe a lot of Undead are immune to Confusion. There are a handful of enemies that are immune to Chaos. Um, I don't believe you're able to hit trolls with it. They're immune to a variety of abilities. I might be wrong about that. You might be able to hit trolls with chaos. I'd have to double check that to be sure, but there are a lot of enemies immune to this spell. And this is also one of the reasons you end up can you uh, end up using spell immunity or enchantment later on. We'll talk about in some of your solo runs. Actually, level five is the last spell you even get enchantment spells. But this is definitely one of the best. I would probably put this just a barely above an A-tier spell, just because there are a lot of enemies immune to this spell, because it's so damn powerful. Um, but I would still say it's an S-tier. It's something that you'll use an awful lot at the beginning of SOA, towards the end of Baldur's Gate 1, and it's just absolutely devastating. Really can't say enough good things about this spell. I definitely recommend taking one or two on your mages, especially if you're running multiple mages and you have multiple people cast this spell. You're going to hit pretty much 99% of your enemies throughout the entire course of the game. Basically, anyone who's not immune to this is going to get hit by it because of the massive saving throw penalty. So I definitely recommend it. Up next, we have Cloud Kill. This is another spell that is just barely right above the A tier. I still would consider this S tier for a couple reasons. We'll get started in that in just a moment. This is an evocation spell, so diviners will not be able to cast it. And this spell will generate a billowing cloud of ghastly yellowish green vapors. Basically, this is another AoE spell. Uh, this will instantly kill anyone with four or fewer hit dice. Five to six will have to save with a minus four penalty to die instantly. And anyone who doesn't have to do either of those things will take 1d10 poison damage every round while in the area of effect. Now, the reason this is so good compared to say like incendiary cloud is because this does poison damage and that's what makes this really special liches are obviously going to be immune to level five and under spells but they're immune to poison anyway because they're undead so that doesn't really matter but where this really comes into play is when you're fighting other humanoid mages uh protection from fire is an extremely common spell you'll see pretty much every mage cast that and that makes incendiary cloud not really do anything it will still interrupt them but it won't actually do any damage, while Cloud Kill will actually do damage. And when you're spell triggering this, or dropping it with multiple mages, this is actually really, really effective for obliterating enemy spellcasters. I use this all the time, especially when fighting 1T mages. I use this in the Twisted Rune. I use this really whenever you're fighting basically a non-undead mage. This is just really, really useful. There are of course some ways to make yourself immune to this. You can drop spell immunity evocation, and uh, be able to actually walk into it and not take damage. Of course, we'll talk about spell immunity in just a little bit. Uh, Cavaliers are immune to the damage effect. However, they can still die, um, assuming they're level 5 or 6 or under. So that's something to keep in mind. I actually tested this to make absolutely sure, and it still works. Even though Cavaliers are 100% immune to poison, they can still die in Cloud Kill. So keep that in mind. Ring of Gax will make, uh, make you completely immune to this effect. And the parapetite of uh, poison, um, basically an amulet that makes you immune to poison, does not actually protect you from this. You will still take poison damage. That protects you from the effect of poison, like getting poisoned by a spider. It does not protect you from the damage. So that is something to keep in mind. But I really like this spell. I use it all the time for interrupting mages. It's also good for killing mages. This isn't really something I typically use on fighters. This is really something I save for anti-casters. And it works really, really, really well in that regards. 
I would say this is probably the weakest of the S tier spells or maybe a really really good A tier spell. This is something I don't often take on a sorcerer. It really depends on what else I'm running in my party just because there are so many other really mandatory S tier spells like Breach, Spell Shield, and Spell Immunity we'll talk about later on but if I can take this spell I do and I will use it all the time in my playthroughs. Really can't say enough good things about it. Definitely one of the best A tier spells. Maybe a weak S tier but still really really good. Definitely recommend that shit. Alright, up next is our next S tier spell is going to be Spell Immunity. This spell is fucking incredible. I can literally talk about this for hours because there's so many things you can do with this spell. It's absolutely amazing. So Spell Immunity is an abjuration spell. Again, I said it a million times before. If you're playing a transmuter, you're playing this game wrong. Do not recommend it. Uh, this spell is just incredible. Obviously a level 5 spell. It lasts for one round per level. Only affects the caster. So you cannot put this on your friends in order to make them immune to magic. But what this does is after casting spell immunity, it will show up a list in the bottom of the screen of every single spell school. Necromancy, enchantment, evocation, divination, abjuration, uh, alteration, etc, etc, etc. And you click one, and then you'll cast this spell, and it will make you immune to that school. Now, it says that, but in a sense that's a lie, because there are a ton of spells that go through these so-called immunities. And I'm actually going to go through the list and mention some of the big and important ones here. The main thing you end up using this for is Spell Immunity Abjuration. This is the only way in the entire game to make yourself immune to the spell magic and remove magic. Those two spells are devastating to your casters. Often they're going to be cast by liches, high level mages, high level clerics who are so much higher level than your party that they work like 90% of the time. And as you know, a naked mage is a fucking dead mage. Um, it's absolutely devastating to have your protection spells dispelled, um, especially on a mage because they're so damn squishy. A planetar will behead a mage in one hit and perma kill them. Uh, getting hit by a fireball or other nasty spell will comet, dragon's breath. Those are going to one shot your backline very quickly. And spell immunity abjuration is a great way of protecting yourself from the spell magic. I really can't say enough good things about it. That being said, Spell Immunity Abjuration does not protect you from any other fucking Abjuration spells in the game. Well, most of them I should say. It does not protect you against Breach, it does not protect you against Spell Thrust, it does not protect you against Pierce, Magic, Spell Strike, all those other spells, it does not protect you from that. However, it does protect you from certain buff spells like casting Remove Fear on yourself or um, uh, protection from Petrification, for example, that's another Adjuration spell. Protection from Evil, it will make you immune to those. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. That if you pop this spell, and you're trying to have someone else cast a spell on you, it might not actually go off, depending on what spell immunity you have up. So this does make you immune to your own spells. And let me talk about that more here, right now. If you cast spell immunity, depending on your installation, Baldur's Gate, uh, the original BG2, and depending on what mods you have, this might be different, so it's something you want to test in your own game. But spell immunity does not make you immune to your own spells. So that means if I cast a cloud kill, and then cast spell immunity evocation, if I walk into the cloud kill, I still take damage from my own cloud kill. I can still cast my own buffs and spells on top of myself, even with spell immunity, and they will always go through. I'm not sure why that is. But that's my current installation, so that is something to keep in mind. You can't drop like 50 incendiary clouds and then walk into them without protection from fire and not die instantly. So that is something you do have to be aware of and keep in mind. I'm going to talk about the other spell schools here real quick, just a quick gloss over them. Alteration. I typically use spell immunity alteration to make myself immune to flesh to sown and disintegrate. Those are very, very common traps. And this is a great way to avoid them if you're playing solo. Spell Immunity Alteration is really the only way to prevent yourself from getting annihilated by those. It's something that you really want to be looking out for. A Sphere of Chaos has a chance to disintegrate. Spell Immunity Alteration will make you immune to that. This is something I will cast very frequently in TOB. Um, because Liches and a lot of high-level mages love to drop Sphere of Chaos. And basically, when you ever fight a Lich or a high-level Mage, you want to use Spell Immunity Alteration and Abjuration. That's really what I use this for, and that's also one of the reasons you'll notice in my playthroughs I always take a several of these, because they're so good. What they don't do, they will not protect you against Time Stop. Not sure why, but you cannot be immune to Time Stop by casting Spell Immunity. It has no effect on it whatsoever. Um, it will work for Haste and Slow. I believe it also works for the Polymorph effects as well. 
So, spell immunity alteration does pretty much everything except the spell you'd really like it to work for, which is time stop. So that's something to keep in mind. Conjuration, um, this will not protect you from conjured creatures. If someone does a monster summoning on top of you or summons an elemental, that elemental will be happy to beat the shit out of you. You are not immune to it. Conjuration. Spell immunity conjuration, however, will work on the power word spells. Um, it will also work on the druid summoning spells. They summon insects, insect plague, creeping doom. Those really, really fucking obnoxious, spell, obnoxious spells. This does work on them most of the time. I have had times where I've been hit with an insect plague anyways. I have no fucking idea why. I'm assuming because of the way the insect plague is coded that the initial target will be immune to it. But because the insect plague does a secondary check to spread, you'll still get hit by the spread sometimes. This is something I talked about with Fire Shield before in our level 4 guide, so that is something to keep in mind and be aware of. Uh, divination. Um, for some reason in my, uh, my uh, current installation, Spell Immunity Divination does absolutely nothing. I'm assuming this is because of the mods I have installed. Because if you are to cast Improved Invisibility on yourself, then Spell Immunity Abjuration, Spell Immunity Divination, you'd basically be immune to magic. Um, because the enemies cannot target you because you're invisible, and that would be extremely busted were you able to do that. That being said, your enemies can and will use this combination against you, and that's one of the reasons I have uh, Detect Illusion maxed on my thieves in order to counter that a little bit. Um, depending on your mods, that might not be the case, and you might be able to get away with Spell Immunity Divination and Improved Invisibility, making your mage very, very difficult, if not impossible, to kill through magical means. Something to keep in mind there. Enchantment. Uh, there are no enchantment spells after level 5, just an FYI, in case anyone was thinking about being an enchanter. Because there are some really powerful enchantment spells, but there are literally zero after level 5. This also means once you get to a certain point in saving throws, spell immunity enchantment is completely worthless. That being said, if you are playing solo, and because of the BG tool rule set, if you get charmed or CC'd while solo, the game ends instantly and you don't even have a t chance to fight, Spell Immunity Enchantment is very useful in those playthroughs, depending on the fights you're going into. Something to keep in mind there. Evocation Spell Immunity works on pretty much every evocation spell. You can walk into a web, a cloud kill, a fireball, etc, etc, and it seems to do its job pretty much 99-100% to 100 of the times. I cannot think of any spell off the top of my head that is an evocation spell that goes through Spell Immunity. So that is pretty cool. Spell Immunity Evocation, definitely very useful, uh, depending on the fight and depending on what CC and the spell effects you're throwing out. Just again, keep in mind, if you cast Spell Immunity and drop a bunch of cloud kills, you're not immune to your own cloud kills, depending on the mods and installation you have. Illusion up next, I don't know why you'd ever do that. Uh, the only Illusion spells I can think off the top of my head are Blindness and Spook. Uh, there might be one more, um, but... <laughs> If you, I don't think you really have to worry about getting hit by those by the time you get Spell Immunity. Um, so I wouldn't really worry about it. I'm sure I'm missing one. There's got to be more than one hostile illusion spell. Um, blind, Spook, that's all I got. I'm sure there's one or two more, but yeah, never. don't ever cast Spell Immunity Illusion. It's just a complete fucking waste of a spell. Uh, finally, Necromancy. There are a couple devastating Necromancy spells. Uh, Horde Wilting. Uh, Skull Trap, uh, those are probably the biggest. A couple fear spells will be Necromancy as well. This obviously does nothing to animate dead. If someone summons up a bunch of skeletons, spell immunity, Necromancy will not protect you from that. Uh, this works on Finger of Death, Will of the Banshee. Um, I think the biggest ones would probably be those that I already said, though. Uh, but really, I, I don't see a reason to do that, to be honest, unless you don't have protection from uh, magical energy. Those spells will really make you immune to pretty much every necromancy spell aside from the insta-death effects. But you don't have to have a massive save, uh, massive saving throws to save versus, uh... Well, the Banshee, I think, is no penalty. And I think Finger of Death is only a negative two penalty, so it's not too hard to save versus those anyways. That being said, if you're going up against Liches and for some reason you have a fuck ton of spell immunities memorized, feel free to drop, down a, drop a necromancy in there too. Liches love to cast Horde Wilting, a lot of high-level mages love to chain contingency that, so if you do for some reason are there and do not have protection for magical energy, Spell Immunity is a great thing to have and a great way to save yourself there. Alright, that will take care of every single spell school. I'm trying to go as quickly as I possibly can. I could literally talk about Spell Immunity for ages and talk about all the different combos you can use. 
It's great to have multiple mages drop a fuck ton of spells, cloud kills, webs, etc, etc, and send in your blade or bard or fighter mages, pop spell me to the evocation. They can walk into all that madness and take absolutely no damage whatsoever. Sphere of Chaos, all sorts of, basically every AoE spell, you can just drop on top of people using spell immunity and they'll take no damage from any of it. So there's really, the sky's the limit when it comes to the combinations and things you can do with this spell. And lastly and most importantly, this spell, I've tested it in BG1, it doesn't have it. But in BG2 it does, it has aura cleansing. And what I mean by that is basically every time you do an action that's not an attack, such as drinking a potion, using a magical ability, or casting a spell, it takes up your turn for that round. Meaning that you can't cast another spell, chug another potion, or use another innate ability. Aura Cleansing gets around that by letting you cast this instantly. So what that means is I can cast a Magic Missile, I see someone casting an Enchantment Spell, I can click Spell Immunity and instantly cast Spell Immunity Enchantment even though I've already used up my turn for the round. This means that if you have the Robe of Vecna on, an Amulet of Power, you can basically make yourself immune to any spell while it's coming at you. Which is really, really cool. And there's some really amazing things you can do with that. For one, it lets you, you know, save your spell immunity when you really need it. One round per level is not a long time. When you get in long fights, this spell will wear off more than once. Maybe even twice. Uh, some of the Lich fights in TOB especially are very, very long. And you'll have to cast this more than once. And that was the other thing I don't know if I mentioned about Abjuration. Uh, this also makes you immune to imprisonment and trap the soul by Liches and Demi-Liches. This is a spell, like I said, I use pretty much every single time I'm going up against a mage. Abjuration, Alteration, especially when going against high-level mages, using Disintegration, or using a Sphere of Chaos. You really can't say enough good things about this spell. I typically use it for defensive purposes against other mages, as opposed to offensive. Like I said, the things you can do with a fighter mage or a blade, walking into uh, basically a battlefield of cloud kills, fireballs, webs, etc., etc., and taking no damage, which is cool. But I mostly use this to keep my own buffs and keep my uh, backline safe. But you can use it however you want. If you want to use it offensively or defensively, it's your choice. Just know that really the sky's the limit, and there are a handful of spells for pretty much every school that will actually you won't be immune to. I think the biggest ones for that are going to be the Abjuration School, which most Abjuration spells will go through it. Alteration doesn't work for Time Stop. Conjuration does have some problems with the, uh, the insects, but for the most part... Um, this spell is really, really fucking incredible. This is literally the first spell I take on every one of my sorcerers. As soon as I get uh, my level 5 spells unlocked, I take spell immunity first. This thing's fucking amazing. Can't say enough good things about it, guys. If you haven't played and experimented with this, you should. And if you don't take this in your runs, you should. This spell is fucking game-changing. It is game-changing all the way from the beginning of BG2 all the way to the end of TOB. Definitely, definitely take this shit. Alright, next S tier spell, is, and the final one for this list, is going to be Spell Shield. Spell Shield, also an abjuration spell. Once again, transmuters lose out on one of the best spells in the game. This is a spell that, unlike Spell Immunity, will actually last three rounds per level, and it does have a long cast time of eight, so it's not something you typically will be able to get off in combat, assuming you're butt naked. But this spell is very, very important, because what it does, it will protect you from the next magical attack made against them. And what it means by that is there are a variety of mage spells that are designed to strip mage defenses. Um, this will protect you from Spell Thrust, Secret Word, Breach, Lower Resistance, Pierce Magic, Ruby Ray, Warding Whip, Pierce Shield, and Spell Strike. If any of these spells are cast, the Spell Shield will absorb them completely. This is very, very good because every fucking mage in this game is going to be hitting your backline with Breach. Warding Whip is very rare, but some liches do cast it lower resistance the same way. Ruby Ray is fairly common. Secret Word, very uncommon. Same with Spell Thrust. I typically use this to block Spell Strike and to block Breach. These are the two most common spells used against your mages, and Spell Shield will absorb it completely. What you can do with this is because those spells can only be cast once per round, obviously, unless they uh, are you fighting Kengax, somebody with Aura Cleansing, or Improved Alacrity. So what you can do on your mages is whenever you get breached or hit with Spell Strike or whatever, you can throw up another Spell Shield. And what this will do is it will protect your Spell Immunity, and as long as your Spell Immunity Abjuration is safe, you can't be dispelled. Which means your mage is going to be sitting pretty with his protection for magical weapons, his stone skin, all his other buffs keeping him safe. And this is one of the reasons that mages are actually the hardest enemy to kill in the game. And mages can actually be 
technically tankier than a Dwarven Defender. Because even though a Dwarven Defender can take 95% less damage from physical attacks, a mage with protection for magical weapons will be taking zero damage. And zero is always better than a very, very tiny amount. And like I said, you really can't say enough good things about this. This spell is absolutely useless if you're fighting fighters and fighting clerics. But if you're fighting other mages, and let's be real, you are going to be fighting lots of other mages, this spell is very useful to cast before the fight begins, and maybe once or twice during, depending on what the enemy mages are doing, to make sure you keep your buffs safe. This is how you keep your mages alive, boys. Spell immunity and spell shield. That's how you keep your buffs up, and as long as you're buffed, your mage is really, truly incapable of dying. Okay. That is going to be it with the S-tier spells here for us, boys. The next spell is going to be an A-tier spell, and it is Animate Dead. This is another one that I was really, really struggling to place. Animate Dead is a fucking amazing spell. And in all truthfulness, it really is an S-tier spell, but I put it A-tier for a reason I'll go to in just a minute. It's a necromancy spell, so the illusionist can't get it. It lasts for 8 hours, a casting time on 9, so it's typically not something you want to be doing mid-combat, something beforehand, although you can, obviously, if you really want to, and this will summon a skeleton based on your level. 1 to 6 is really irrelevant, as you can't cast Anima Dead until you're at least level 9 or 10 if you're a sorcerer, uh, unless, of course, you are um, being a wild mage and casting it with Duyomer, but good luck with that, you fucking madman. Uh, 1 to 6 will do a 3 HD skeleton, 7 through 10 will do a 5 HD, 11 through 14 will do 7 HD, and 15 and up will do a 9 HD. Additionally, the war every single skeleton warrior will come with complete immunity to cold, um, it will come with 50% damage reduction to slashing and piercing, I believe, as well as a couple other minor immunities, immunities of that basically every undead gets. It's immune to poison, immune to fear, immune to hold, charm, sleep, etc, etc. Additionally, it will have magic resistance based on which one you do. I'm not sure if the original one actually does. I don't believe it does, but I do know 5 HD and up do, up to the 15th and up one having 90% magic resistance. This is fucking incredible. This is arguably the best summon in the game. Um, very, very close behind uh, Mordekind and Sword. Obviously, Planetar is a king, but this is arguably the best repeatable summon in the game. Because unlike Mordekind and Swords, which are still vulnerable to magic damage, which is why they can't be used against Beholders, Skeletons have an enormous amount of damage reduction for physical, aside from crushing, and they also have an enormous amount of magic resistance. These Skeletons can solo Beholders. One Beholder can massacre your party in seconds unless you're very, very quick and very, very lucky. One skeleton can kill a beholder with no problem whatsoever. If you're summoning multiple of these, casting haste on them and sending them in with a wizard eye, you can basically clear the entire beholder area without actually getting in combat at all. These things are fucking incredible. Their Thacko is fairly decent. I believe it's about 10 for some of the higher levels, a bit lower for the lower levels. Um, they are going to be wielding magical equipments, so this will be getting by some of the natural resistances certain enemies have. Of course, it doesn't do jack shit to higher level enemies. Golems, these things do absolutely nothing to. One golem will basically wipe out an army of skeletons, but for the most part, most humanoids in this game are going to be using swords, which means skeletons are very good at tanking them, and obviously very good at tanking mages as well as mages are going to be doing magical damage, and skeletons have very high magic resistance. This is really your bread and butter summon spell. Anytime you really need to be summoning uh, creatures to help tank for you, or to help do damage, this is the spell you go to. Now, even though this spell is very, very awesome, and these things are absolutely amazing, it's an A-tier um, rating. And why is that? That's because while this is a level 5 arcane spell, clerics get this at level 3. It does the exact same thing at level 3. And that is, to me, kind of disappointing and depressing. Um, in the original Baldur's Gate, you could actually summon massive armies of these. Because the original Baldur's Gate, every summon spell would summon 6 as opposed to 1. Um, but obviously that was changed for the Baldur's Gate 2 rule set. And this is the enhanced edition which uses the Baldur's Gate 2 rule set. So you really have to summon one at a time. This also means that you have to take this many times. And as we already talked about, some of these other spells are absolutely mandatory. Uh, you really don't want to be going without a breach. You really want to have spell immunity and spell shield as well. And unless your name is Edwin Odesseron, you're not going to have the spell slots to do Animate Dead 2. And for that reason, I leave this as an A tier rating. This is something your cleric should be using. 
That being said, if you're solo and uh, you have extra level 5 spell slots, then you really should take one or two of these. Really the best summon you can get until you get Mordekainen's. These things are super tanky, super awesome. They scale well after level 7. 6 and below, these things are pretty useless. But 7 and up, when they get their magic resistance, and they're so tanky because they're passive resistances, these things are just incredible. Really should take a couple of these and use them throughout the whole game, although I'd recommend doing it on a cleric. I uh, really can't say enough good things about it. So, definitely take this. This is your bread and butter summon as, co as compared, especially when you compare it to the elementals, which we'll talk about a little later. And this spell is amazing. Okay, first B tier spell, boys. Domination. Domination is an enchantment spell, uh, so it can't be used by invokers. Uh, range is visual range of the caster, duration of 8 rounds, casting time of 5, so about 3 seconds of cast time will target one creature. And this is basically a buffed up version of Dire Charm. Um, the target is allowed a negative two penalty, um, is, is forced to save at a negative two penalty, and if it fails, it's charmed for eight rounds. You can use their abilities, you can use them to attack other people, great, fun stuff. I personally don't like this spell. I don't use it a lot. The casting time is too long for me. Uh, enemies save versus this shit all the fucking time. Um, I really don't, I'm not a big fan of it. It just never seems to work when you really want it to. Uh, there's a couple niche spell uses for this in Dyrna's Keep. Uh, if you charm the guard captain, um, you have a little dialogue with him. He gives you an item and you get XP for it. Um, I typically use this if one of my party members gets charmed because I wasn't paying attention, didn't have Kata commands up. I'll use this to try to charm them back. That is something I do do, but for the most part, I, if I don't have any other level 5 spells, I'll put a domination in there. But if I do, I really don't take this spell. There's really not much use to it. People just save versus it way too damn much. Charm is a very common immunity. Um, just because it was so devastating in Baldur's Gate 1 that Bioware really went out of their way to make a lot of enemies immune or resistant to this shit. Um, that being said, it works on humanoids quite a bit. Humans have the shittiest save versus spell in the game. Uh, to my knowledge, orcs might be close. Um, but humans do not have a good save versus spell, so this is something you can use on a variety of humanoids. And by humanoids, I mean actual humans, not humanoids, sorry. So, I mean, it does have some fun uses, but for the most part, there are better spells for the level. Um, I typically look at this as a uh, defensive level spell immunity spell shield or offensive with breach. Um, yeah, so that's my, my personal thing. Um, but you can take a domination too, and if you're an enchanter, this will happen uh, more frequently, but... Personally, I wouldn't really recommend it. Even if you're an enchanter, I wouldn't take domination. I'd be taking chaos instead. So. Alright, not great. You can have one or two if you have nothing better, but as soon as you get better spells, you surely shouldn't be using domination anymore. Up next is Oracle. This is the close one for me. Oracle is a divination spell, and it will go off fairly quickly, cast time of five, so not nearly as long as detect invisibility as a cleric, although not as quickly as detect invisibility as a mage, the level two spell. But what this does do, unlike those, is it will dispel all illusions. Um, this will work on reflect image, invisibility, mirror image, non-detection, improved invisibility, and shadow door. Also, depending on the monster you're fighting, um, this will actually go through people immune to level 5 and below. This works on Rakshasa. I have no idea why it does, but it does. Rakshasa are supposed to be immune to all spells level 7 and below, but they are not immune to Oracle. And so that is something I end up taking and using against them on occasion. Um, on occasion. This is not a spell that I have in my spellbook at all times. And this is not a spell that I'll even use every single game I play. That being said, it does have some uses. Um, in BG1, I believe you can actually get this in a scroll. Um, and you can use it against the final fight. Couldn't be handy there. But for the most part, you're going to get True Sight at level 6. And True Sight is basically an oracle that goes off every round. True Sight is fucking amazing, and it lasts for a full turn. We'll talk about it more when we get to level 6, but this is basically a shitty one-off one True Sight here. But, because it does come at a time where you can use it in Baldur's Gate 1, it can actually have some uses. It can actually have some uses. And again, like I said, working with the Rakshasa, that's pretty cool too. Uh, up next is protection from acid and protection from electricity. I'm going to go and do these both at the same time since they're basically the exact same thing. These are abjuration spells, which means transmuters can't use them. And the only time you really ever use these is when you're fighting a dragon that's going to be hitting people with a breath that does acid or electrical damage. 
that's really it. Um, I think this actually does work on uh, the acid uh, AoE ability that uh, mages do get, but that I don't think I've actually ever once seen an enemy spellcaster use that. Um, try to think. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anyone use it. But because uh, Dragon Breath hits so incredibly fucking hard, if you don't have this and you don't have either of these for those particular dragons, the acid one is going to be the sand dragon. Um, at the end of uh, Baldur's Gate 2 SOA, the one in um, the Elf City, sold in SLR, and Electricity, that's going to be uh, Draconis later on in TOB. If you don't have these on Insane Difficulty, your party's going to get annihilated um, very quickly. I think there's also an EE fight where some idiot is using a dra acid Dragon Breath ability. Super stupid. I think it's part of Rasad's quest, if I remember right. And if you don't have this on, your party's just going to get annihilated. Like I said, though... This is literally situational. Only in those situations should you be casting these, but because if you don't have them, you're going to fucking die. This is going to be a B-tier spell just because of that. I would not take these as a sorcerer. This is something I would cast from a scroll only for those fights. That being said, if you like protection spells, go for it. The world's your oyster, but I wouldn't recommend taking these as a sork. This is something that you do want to have, however, on, say, a regular mage like Edwin or somebody, so he can throw this up on your whole party when you go into those fights. But these last for one turn per level, just like a lot of the other protection spells. So super good in that regard, that they will last a long time. This does work for Acid Era too, I guess. I didn't really consider that, of course. There are some acid effects. Electricity will obviously work against lightning, chain lightning, but... At no point should you ever be taking these in order to make yourself immune to Acid Era and Lightning Bolt. Lightning is a lot more common than acid, but this is really just for the dragons. That's literally it. Alright, uh, up next is Lower Resist, because I forgot to talk about this earlier. Let's go and talk about this now. This is another spell that's really hard to place. This could be S tier, A tier, B tier, depending on your party and what you're running and uh, what you plan on doing. So Lower Resistance is an Abjuration spell. Once again, Transmuters miss out on a very useful spell. Cast in time of 5, hitting one creature, so about half a round, 3 seconds. And what it will do is it will reduce the saving, uh, excuse me, the um, magic resistance of the target. Uh, there's no saving throw for the spell, it will also bypass MR, so as long as you're hitting somebody who doesn't have like a spell shield up, um, this will always go through and hit them and lower the resistance of the target. I believe this caps at 30%, uh, a lot of mage spells will cap at um, level 20, some will cap at 10, some will cap at 15, but very few spells will actually go over 20. So the highest you can actually do is 30% in one go. This is something I will use in spell triggers a lot against dragons, against very powerful drow. Um, and this will basically obliterate the resistances. Fighting dragons who really have a very high amount of magic resistance, drow too, basically means that most of your spells don't work. Especially your damage spells. They almost always don't work. If you ever played with Vakoni in the party, and you'll notice just how often she completely resists spells. It's abso absolutely devastating to fighting uh, targets with high MR if you do not have lower resist on the target. I wouldn't recommend using this against Undead, um, but this is something you will use all the time against Drow and against Dragons especially. Because it is absolutely devastating. Hitting Furcrag with a spell trigger, lower resistance, and then going into... Skull Traps, Magic Missile, and uh, Horrid Wilting, you can basically obliterate a dragon in a time stop, assuming you're prepared for it. Um, if you take this on multiple mages, you can all have it just, each person can cast it once, and you can obliterate a dragon like that, or you can combine them in a spell trigger, it's up to you, it's your preference. If you're running multiple mages, I would definitely recommend each person takes this once, and so you can really single out those targets with high MR and annihilate them very quickly. When you're fighting large groups of drow, like you do in... Um, in Sendai's Enclave, this spell doesn't really help you that much, just because there are so many damn targets with very high magic resistance. But when you're fighting one big beefy target, Draconis, uh, his son, Abazagal, or vice versa, I don't remember, fucking, who gives a shit who fucked who is a dragon, right? Um, but when you're fighting dragons especially, this is going to make a big, big, big deal. And if you don't have this, your mages are basically going to be sitting there with their dicks in their hand doing absolutely nothing. So... Definitely take lower resistance if you're running with a high magic party. If you're playing solo and you don't have this shit, um, I don't think you. I don't know if you could even get by the Ravager. Um, trying to think. I think it'd be very, very difficult for you to do so. You might be able to get by him without it, but yeah. I think actually the Ravager you have to use Pierce Magic. I'm not sure, but regardless, this is super good against fighting targets with high HP, 
and high magic resistance if you're running with multiple mages and if you're playing solo definitely want to pick this up if you're running with a very heavy fighter party and you only have one mage in your party probably want to skip this it's not that great in that regard but if you're running multiple mages or are playing solo as a mage lower resistance should definitely be on your radar and because of that it's really hard to place this a spell rating in my playthroughs i always play very heavy ca heavy caster so lower resistance is s tier but in your playthroughs if you're running with minx Keldorn and Valigar and those weird, lawful, goody-goody, heavy fighter groups, then lower resistance is fucking worthless. Don't bother with it. So that's something you just gotta keep in mind for your own playthrough. Okay? Alright, now we're gonna get into the C tier spells. Uh, pretty much every spell after this is garbage, or very situational. Um, we don't have any RP spells in this block, in this uh, spell level, um, so we're gonna go try to go through, through these very quickly. I know I took up a lot of time already talking about how awesome some of these other spells are. And uh, so, yeah, let's go and get it started. Cone of Cold, Evocation spell. So that means uh, Enchanters can't use it. It is a casting time of five, so about half a round, three seconds. And just like some of the other Cone spells, this is going to be a fan spell. It's going to start at the Mage and then spread out like this. And it will do 1d4 plus one damage per level of the caster. Now, at first, you're thinking, okay, uh, Cold damage, unlike Fire, which is very commonly mitigated, is a little more rare. Undead are immune to cold, which sucks, but this should hit a lot of other enemies more often, right? True. However, what this does do is... The problem with cold damage is it does cold damage. So if somebody actually gets hit by this, and this does 10 HP or... Uh, 10 to 14 HP more than their max health, um, this will perma-kill them. And unlike fire, where you see their ashes and can loot their body... Uh, cold will actually disintegrate them. This will disintegrate items, which means if you use this spell on somebody with an item you want and they're already low on HP and it hits them, um, they're going to die and all their items are going to be destroyed. That's really the big issue with this spell. I mentioned it before for the Fire Shield as well, Fire Shield Blue. You do have a chance of perma-killing people with cold damage and that's something you want to keep in mind because early on in Baldur's Gate 2, a lot of items early are very important. There's some really good items you get as drops from enemies, and if they're disintegrated, then you don't get the items to drop, obviously. So that's something you really want to keep in mind. Um, I think the spell could have its uses in certain situations. Um, it is a level 5 spell, so liches are immune to it. However, as I mentioned before, um, a lot of mages will cast protection from fire. They won't cast protection from cold. Um, so this is something you could do, theoretically, to interrupt a mage that you wouldn't normally be able to touch. That being said, because it is a fan, um, you do have to maneuver your characters around quickly. If they're CC'd, then this is a great way to get them killed, as it does do a lot of damage, especially on insane difficulty. Um, it is fairly easy to dodge, however. Uh, this is something that Deveorn uses an awful lot. Not me, Deveorn. The actual mage Deveorn uses an awful lot in my installation in BG1. And unless you're slowed or not paying attention, you can actually outrun this spell. So it's really not that hard to dodge, but you have to be on the ball and paying attention to it. So in that regards, unlike a fireball, which goes off pretty fucking quick and is really hard for your uh, melee to dodge unless you already move them out of the way before it comes, Kona Cold, they can actually outrun pretty easily. But like I said, because it has a chance to destroy people's gear, this is really something I never ever use. I think I've used it like once or twice. I've tried to make it work as a kid, seeing if there's something it could be done for, because as a kid I literally played with every single spell. Um, because magic is the coolest shit ever, right? Um, but in reality, it's just something I would never recommend. You can take it if you really want to, but keep that in mind that if you use this on enemies, it does have a chance of disintegrating them, which means their loot is bye-bye. All right, up next we have all the Conjure Elementals. Now again, I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. Um, these are actual hot garbage. Now, fire is a little bit better than the other two, and we'll talk about that in a second. These are obviously Conjuration spells. The duration is one turn, plus one round per level. A full round casting time, uh, nine. This is not technically a full round, but pretty damn close to it. And what it will do is it will summon an elemental of air, earth, or fire. Now what's stupid about this is not only is the elemental weak as shit with eight hit dice, um, some of the elementals have non-magical weapons. Um, I believe the earth is non-magical. Uh, air and fire are magical. Fire actually does come with fire resistance, but these don't really get any other resistances. I think all the elementals are immune to uh, normal weapons, but that's really it. They might be immune to plus one as well, I'm not 100% sure, but for the most part, these are fucking garbage. They do no damage, they have no HP, they die very quickly, 
And on top of it, when you summon them, you have to actually engage in a psychic contest for three rounds with them. Basically what it means is your mage is stunned for three fucking rounds, 18 seconds, having a mental duel with these things. And if he fails, it goes hostile and attacks you. This is something you could literally never risk doing in combat, because 20 seconds is a long fucking time for your mage to be stunned and incapable of doing anything. Not to mention, when it, even if you do successfully do it, they suck. They, they're they actually fucking terrible. Animate Dead has a 9 HD skeleton. At level 15, of course, which is a bit higher than you get these, but... The skeletons come with massive resistances. Massive resistances. They also come with magical weapons. They have multiple attacks per round. They're just so much better in really every fucking way when you compare it with these. Um, like I said, if you're role-playing, then go for it. You can summon these, but... And if you don't have any other spell and you just absolutely need an extra body to tank a fight for you, like maybe you're deep in a dungeon and most of your party is dead and you can't res them and you never learned animate dead or any other monster summoning spell and you just absolutely have to have something, then I guess you can go and use one of these, but they're so terrible. I just really can't condone you really ever using them. Like I said, if you want to, you know, the world's your oyster. Go for it. But keep in mind that these spells are fucking hot garbage. It's one of the things that actually really depressed me about BG2. Is they just nerfed monster summoning so damn hard. Understandable, because it was so damn good in BG1, but really a shame in that regard. Up next is Hold Monster. This is an interesting spell. This is another enchantment spell. As I mentioned before, there's a ton of enchantment spells in level 5. Because this is literally the last level you actually have enchantment spells. 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, there are 0. Um, and what this is, this is basically a better hold person. It only lasts for one round per level, so uh, it does last a little bit longer than the one turn hold person from before. Casting time of 5, as normal it will target one creature and any enemies within 7.5 feet, saving throw made with a minus 2 penalty, and what makes this slightly better than hold person is the fact that it will work on more enemies and creatures. Still doesn't work on Undead, but it doesn't have to be an actual humanoid for this to work. This can stun a variety of creatures. That being said, it's still garbage. It's still actual hot garbage. Minus 2 penalty is not good, especially when you compare that to Chaos, which forces them to save with a minus 4 penalty. Also, Chaos is a 30 foot radius, Hold Monster is a 7.5 foot radius. And you can argue, well, they're held, they can't move, very easy to kill them afterwards. How many times are you actually in a fight where the enemy needs to be stunned for you to hit them? Either it's a wizard with protection for magical weapons and you do no fucking damage, or it's somebody with damage reduction like a golem and you do a little damage, but for the most part, the way Thacko and AC works in BG2 is pretty much every one of your attacks, assuming you aren't a mage with 9 strength, is gonna land. So you really don't need enemies to be held. I guess you could argue that this does stop them from casting, but Chaos does the exact same fucking thing, so... I don't know. I personally don't like Hold Monster. I really don't use it. Um, I don't think I've actually ever used it. Uh, if it worked for versus Undead 2, then maybe you could make an argument that this is something you could have in your spellbook and use all the time. Or at the very least have one or two in your spellbook always because it works on literally everything. Um, but it doesn't. And Undead are a fairly significant portion of enemies in Baldur's Gate 2. Although Humanoids still dominate it for sure. Uh, that being said, the spell just still sucks. I mean, even if you're an enchanter and they're forced to save with a, a negative 4 penalty, I would take Chaos every day of the week. Every single day of the week, Chaos is just way better across the board. Um, I accidentally skipped Feeble Mind here. Again, another enchantment spell. Um, this is basically a better blind. Uh, the duration is permanent, casting time of 5, targets one creature, and if they fail their saving throw with a negative 2 penalty, um, it turns them into a simple beast of burden. Basically, they just stand there until they're either dispelled or until you kill them. So basically what this does is it basically makes somebody a free kill and takes them out of the fight. You know what else does that? Blind. You know what level blind is? Level 1. Feeble Mind's a level 5 spell. Blind's a level 1 spell. You see the problem here? Uh, Feeble Mind obviously does come with a small save penalty, but... I don't know why you'd ever be taking this spell, even as an enchanter, again. Why would you ever try to feeble mind one target when you can chaos multiple targets? There's just no point. The only time you'd ever want to feeble mind something if it's a really powerful enemy, and really powerful enemies are almost always immune to these spells. Uh, trying to hit somebody with this, trying to hit a dragon with this, don't fucking bother. Trying to hit, you know, a mind flare with this with their massive magical resistance, don't bother. 
trying to cast against a beholder don't bother it's absolute suicide to even try any of those things and why would you be casting feeble mind on like a shadow thief or some fighter who's trying to hit you there's no point you're gonna be you're never gonna be fighting one fighter like you did in Baldur's Gate 1 there's no Saravok type enemy that's just this massive unstoppable beast that you have to CC like a uh, gray wolf and Saravok and uh, that stupid idiot with the gauntlets of weapon specialization those are really powerful fighters that you had to CC otherwise they would just cut through your whole party that enemy doesn't exist in BG2 it really doesn't and because mages will have all sorts of spell protections preventing you from hitting them with these things normally then it just it at no point do I actually see myself using this spell and for that reason it's still a C tier that being said what it does is great and if it manages to go off even better I mean that's great but if I have to ch if I have to choose I'm gonna be using chaos for this level if I'm trying to CC something not feeble mind and when there's a spell that does what this does but better it just basically makes that spell C tier or worse and which is kind of a shame because there are a lot of fun spells in this game that that happens to all right up next is monster summoning three conjuration spell uh, just like I said before about monster summoning one two and the various other summons in this game uh, Bioware nerfed the shit out of these because they are so damn broken in BG1 in Baldur's Gate 1, Monster Summoning 3 would summon 6 Ogre Berserkers that would basically massacre anyone in the game. Um, when Deveorn did this to you in Baldur's Gate 1, the original, original Baldur's Gate 1, um, it was absolutely devastating. This spell was um, fucking incredible. And naturally, Bioware nerfed the shit out of it, and now it summons 1 as opposed to 6 Ogre Berserkers. It also might get an Edder Cap, which is arguably even worse, with a much shittier Thacko. Um... This spell sucks. If you want a tank, you'll be using Animate Dead. If you want something that does damage, you'll still want to be using Animate Dead. It's just really, really a damn shame that they nerfed the hell out of these so damn badly. If Conjurers would like summon um, extra monsters um, all the time, that'd be cool. But at no point would you should you really ever be using this again with the caveat that you have nothing better. If you have, if you don't have Animate Dead, you don't have anything else, you don't have a cleric to summon anything, and you really just need that body then you can use monster summoning. I've used them on Edwin at least twice in my runs just because I need that extra body or I need that extra damage because I didn't have anything else. And in those situations, this can, you know, this is better than nothing, but it's not much better than nothing. It really isn't. There's a chance that you do get extra monsters, but even if you got three, I still wouldn't use this spell. The six, fucking incredible. One or two, it's just hot garbage. And it's such a shame too. Because you basically make Conjurers absolutely useless in that sense. I mean, of course, Conjurers do get the bonus to the Power Word spells, so that's basically it. Alright, up next is uh, Minor Spell Turning. Holy shit, I'm just going all out of order here. I'm really sorry about that, guys. I'm going to put in the spell list at the bottom after we finish the video, so you can just click to each spell. I do apologize, I'm not going in order. My writing is just horribly illegible, and I really apologize for that. If you want to look at my actual dog shit writing here... So, I'm skipping shit left and right, and I apologize for that. <coughs> Excuse me. Minor spell turning. Abjuration spell, so transmuters once again miss out. Um, and what this will do is we'll rebound spells up to, uh, I think it's 4th level. Yep, only effect up to 4th level spells, and it will affect 4 spell levels. Uh, which basically means that um, whenever you're hit by a magic missile, or an acid arrow, or something like that, or... Um, it will actually reflect on the original target. And that sounds great, right? But it only works on spells up to level 4 and only 4 spell levels. So, it, I just really can't think of a time where I'd be like, Oh shit, if only I had spell turning here, this would be incredible. And spell the actual later spell turning and spell deflection have their uses. Because they can reflect breach, and we'll talk about that later on. But... Minor Spell Turning doesn't do that. Minor Spell Turning doesn't reflect jack shit, aside from some very, very low-level spells. And by the time you get to this level, uh, getting hit with a Magic Missile is not scary. I don't cast Shield ever again, despite the fact that Shield makes you immune to Magic Missile. And this doesn't work against AoE spells like Fireball and Lightning Bolt. If it did, that'd be great, but it doesn't. Um, so there's just really no point to really ever take this spell. Um, there are some interesting things you can do with this if you're casting spells on yourself. I was told by one of my viewers that if you have two people using Minor Spell Turning, you can bounce an Agonizer Scorcher between them to summon a fuck ton of fire and just annihilate your enemies with that, which sounds cool, but really at no point would I ever consider myself using this. 
Um, like I said, this this tier is basically for defensive spells and for some AoE CC, which is pretty great. And then of course breach. So, like I said, if you want to do it, if you want to go and cast this spell because you're an abjurer and you like role playing, go for it. I really probably should have put this down to role play because I would literally take monster summoning. Th I would if I had minor spell turning and monster summoning three, I would fill my spell book with monster summoning three. I would use the conjure elementals over minor spell turning. This thing is just hot garbage. That being said, um, there is an item in the game that lets you use this on your warriors. That is actually more useful because it will prevent them taking some damage. And this does work to reflect triggers and sequencers as well, which can be useful there. But for a mage, no. You have better ways to defend yourself, and that just makes this spell useless. Okay, up next is Phantom Blade. This is another weird one. This is an evocation spell, and what this will do is it will summon a sword that instantly goes into your caster's hand. This replaces their weapon, just like the others, like Melf's Minute Meteors. This will replace their weapon and prevent them from moving it around. However, unlike Melf's Minute Meteors, this weapon is hot garbage. It lasts for three rounds, plus one round per level, cast a time of five, and it's basically a plus three sword that does extra damage to undead. Big fucking deal. This does absolutely nothing to your Thacko. This does absolutely nothing to your attacks per round, making it completely useless for a sorcerer. Remember Melsa Newt Meteors? Plus six weapon. Plus six. That goes through absolute immunity. This thing won't even go through a fucking mantle. That is fucking pathetic, dude. Actually pathetic. Well, a mantle, depending on what mods you have installed. My mantles are way, way better in my game. Um... But I mean, it's, just, it's fucking garbage. Absolute garbage. You get plus three weapons so damn early on at Baldur's Gate 2. As soon as you do the slavers, not even the slavers, but literally killing Lettanon and the Copper Coronet, you can buy a plus three axe. Plus three weapon, right then and there. Rybald sells plus three weapons. Flail the Ages, you can get extremely early. Uh, there's just no reason for you to ever be taking this. The only place I know that this exists is actually in the Harper area. Um, it might be sold somewhere else. Um might be sold by the smith and trade meet or a couple other places but you really won't get this unless uh, you really won't get this early unless you're a sorcerer and for some reason choose to take it or you basically rush those areas and by the time you're able to do that shit you already have plus three weapons and then you might say well well it does extra damage against undead you know what else does extra damage against undead daystar azure edge fucking uh mesa disruption if you want an anti-undead weapon you should be using those and you can get azure edge Literally, 20 minutes into the game. 20 minutes into the game, go take care of that quest at the Copper Coronet, boom. You got a weapon that can insta-kill undead. And I know all you people out there are goody-goodies playing good parties, so you can use that. As an evil player, you can't use Azure Edge, which sucks, but... Um, yeah, this is just garbage. For all I know, this is actually mitigated by the undead's uh, damage reduction, too. Which would be fucking hilarious. The way it reads makes it seem like it does an extra 10 magic damage, but... For all I know, this is all physical and gets mitigated, which makes it even fucking worse. I, mean, I really just can't condone you ever using this. It's just garbage. Um, like I said, if you want a spell to do damage for your sorcerer, it should be Melson New Meteors. Um, that gives you 5 attacks per round, 10 with improved taste. This doesn't do any of that. Improved taste on a sorcerer with Phantom Blade, you'll be using 2 attacks per round, and your Thacko is going to be just as shitty as it was before. So, really can't say enough bad things about this. In contrast to the things I say good things about, don't recommend taking this, even as a fighter mage, it's actual hot garbage. And the only thing that's possibly worse than Phantom Blade is protection from normal weapons. This spell is very borderline RP tier, but it's just not quite there. Um, it's an abjuration spell, so transmuters lose out on a shitty abjuration spell for the first time ever, big whoop. Duration 1 round per level. Casting time of 2, and this makes you immune to non-magical weapons. I can't even think of how many enemies use non-magical weapons. I think there's the Shadow Thieves, and maybe the Brigands jumping you in a couple- no. No, even the first ambushes have magical weapons. Even the first ambushes upon leaving Arenicus's dungeon have magical weapons. A couple Shadow Thieves will use non-magical weapons. Uh, I think the guards use normal spears. And, uh, I think the regular goblins will use regular arrows, and that's it. Every other enemy in this game is going to be using magical ammunition and magical weapons. Every magical creature, their fist attack is going to be a magical weapon, like a ghast, for example. That is a magical attack. 
an enemy you encounter very early on in Baldur's Gate 1, this does absolutely nothing for. This is actual hot garbage. You should never, ever be taking this spell. Especially when you consider that it doesn't work in, com in combination with any of the other uh, abjuration spells. Like, you could cast protection from magical weapons and protection from normal weapons. Maybe I could consider using this now and then, but for the most part, no. Protection from magical weapons is you get next level and will actually protect you. Protection of normal weapons will not. This spell is so terrible. So bad. I literally can't even think of a time we'd ever use this. Just keep in mind, there's a level 3 spell that makes you immune to normal weapons. Level 3. And I still don't use it. Still don't use it. Something you can get in Baldur's Gate 1 and it's still not good. There are too many enemies using fucking magical weapons. Even in Baldur's Gate 1. Most enemies will be using magical weapons after a certain point, And it's just... It's such a shame. I don't understand why this spell even exists, really. Because I can't think off the top of my head anything besides Shadow Thieves and Guards who don't use magical weapons. And even then, most sha a lot of Shadow Thieves will have magical weapons. So, definitely skip this, guys. It's terrible. Up next is Shadow Door. This is a bit iffy for me. I have this as a C-tier spell. Um, this is an illusion spell. Uh, so, Necromancers can't use it. Last nine rounds plus one round per level after level nine. Which basically means it lasts one round per level. Unless you're a sorcerer, in which case it lasts one round less. Actually... No, it's one round per level still, yeah. Um, and basically what this is, is a faster casting improved invisibility. That's literally it. It's an improved invisibility that only can be cast on the caster. So, why would you ever want to take this over improved invis? There are better ways to... There are better oh shit buttons in this game. The oh shit buttons you want to use in this game are stone skin, protection for magical weapons, and potions of invisibility. Those are your oh shit buttons that will go off very quickly. This one is actually slower than all of those, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, that being said, if you have no other level 5 spells, this is not bad to take, freeing up uh, your improved invisibility for level 4, but you can only cast it on yourself, so that does uh, limit its uses a little bit. That being said, I am as much as I love improved invisibility, I don't use it all the time, because when I cast it on somebody, they're invisible, and which means I can no longer target them with defensive spells, heals, etc, etc. That is something to keep in mind. That if you do cast this, if you're an illusionist, you're playing Yan, for example. Yan's the person I actually have this on occasionally because his level 5 spells are garbage. Um, you can't actually heal them or anything, assuming they get hit after they cast this spell. Something to keep in mind. In reality, though, it's still a C-tier spell. If you want an illusion spell, if you want an invisibility spell, you should just take improved invisibility. Because then you have a lot more variety in the ways you can use it by casting it on multiple different people. But this that's literally what this is. It's a faster casting, um, improved invisibility that only works on the caster. That's got C tier written all over it. And finally, boys, we have Sunfire, uh, an evocation spell here. So this is something that uh, enchanters will not, excuse me, enchanters will not be able to use. Sorry, I mixed up div divining and conjuration for, except for a second. And basically what this is, is a stronger fireball that you can't aim where it goes because it's basically centered on the caster and spreads out. Unlike Fireball, though, this caps at 15d6, so that is something to keep in mind. If I remember right, in the original game, this hit the caster too. And what you could do is you could actually chug a potion of fire resistance and throw on a fire resist ring, and this would hit you and heal you. Um, which was cool. Um, but that doesn't work in any of the versions I've played lately. I think that might have been an EE change. Um... But it's something you could do in the original, is you could actually heal yourself with this by drinking a potion of fire resistance or using a ring of um, fire protection. And I don't think that works anymore. I think I tested this the other day. I went and double tested every uh, level 5 spell just to make sure I'm giving you guys the correct information here. And um, yeah, it doesn't work anymore. Um, but this will do up to 15 d6 fire damage. As always, fire is by far the most mitigated element in the game. There are more enemies immune to fire than there are anything else. Mages especially will love to cast protection from fire to make themselves immune to this shit. Um, this is a level 5 spell, so it also means it will not work on liches. It will not work on Rakshasa. Um, this is suicide trying to get a mage into melee and casting this on a beholder. Um, and then that's the real problem with this spell. Is either you're going to hit your party... Or you force your mage to get into a bad position in order to get this spell off. And both of those situations are just terrible. It's so much better for you to actually aim and chuck a fireball or a skull trap 
than it is to actually walk into melee range and cast Sunfire. If you're solo, then maybe you could argue using this as opposed to a Fireball or a Skull Trap. But the reason people still use Skull Trap after Baldur's Gate 1 is because you can sequencer it. And when you're casting three Skull Traps at once, that's actually quite a bit of damage. And you can't sequence your Sunfire. And that's the real issue with the spell is that in reality it doesn't do as much damage as some of those other spells can do which is really a shame but that being said um you can take this spell and it will do a fairly decent amount of damage depending on your level but it's hard to make use of and even when you do successfully make use of it it's nothing nothing special whatsoever and that's why i'm gonna leave it at a c tier spell and that is gonna be it for us guys thank you so much for watching the video i do appreciate it as always, feel free to leave your comments down to the bottom. Tell me what your favorite spell is. Tell me I'm full of shit and you disagree with everything I'm saying. I really, really do want to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you so much again for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. As always, I hope every single one of you guys has a fucking awesome day. Much love and God bless, guys. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you next time for our spell guide level 6.